Welcome to the Public Sector Marketing Show, a podcast for government and public sector marketing professionals who want to level up their digital marketing and social media knowledge, skills, and strategic thinking. And now, welcome your host, Joanne Sweeney. Hello, and welcome to episode 50 of the Public Sector Marketing Show. Influencer marketing is a booming business, and in 2022, brands are expected to invest over 15 billion euro. It's also now a mainstream form of digital marketing, as we see individuals sharing experiential reels and TikToks of their favorite makeup, athleisure line, or health supplement. But what role can influencer marketing play in government or public sector communications? Or does it even have a role? Well, that's what we're going to investigate in today's show. Coming up, can public sector engage in influencer marketing? How should you approach influencer marketing campaigns? And I speak to Sinead Carroll, founder of Irish Blogger Agency, Ireland's dedicated influencer marketing agency, home to over 600 bloggers, vloggers, content creators, and social media influencers with a combined reach in excess of 11 million. In today's column, I'm asking the question, can public sector organizations engage in influencer marketing? Well, I think quite simply the answer is yes, but let's talk about what influencers are and the types of influencers that you can engage with. And there are macro influencers, micro influencers and nano influencers. So macro influencers are those with an online tribe of over half a million up to 1 million followers on a single social network or over a combined number of social networks. Micro influencers are defined as those with accounts from anywhere from 10,000 followers up to 50,000 followers. And then you have nano influencers, and I think I might fall into this category, and they have fewer than 10,000 followers. So again, nano influencers, you might think, shouldn't play a role in an influencer marketing campaign. However, when you have a smaller tribe, you might have a higher engagement rate. But ultimately, if you're an influencer, it means that you have a following of people that know you, that like you, that trust you, and are motivated to take an action on the back of your recommendation or your advice. Suffice to say that when you're engaging in influencer marketing, there should be authenticity and some trueness when you're connecting the brand with the influencer. Because let's face it, if you have an influencer that was criticizing said brand six months ago, then they wouldn't make a good partner. But there's another reason that government agencies should think about leveraging the power of influencer marketing. And I wanna lean into the data here. So this is the report from Reuters Institute of Journalism and University of Oxford and its Digital News Report 2021. And part of that study delved into the role that social media plays in news consumption, but also when social media users are following and consuming news online, who they're actually following. So let's have a look. One of the questions was, you know, when you are engaging in social media, who do you pay most attention to? And what's becoming increasingly clear is that social media users are not moving away from journalists or mainstream media, but increasingly they are more interested in the content of ordinary or influential people. And that is also true when we look at the under 35s, those figures are actually higher. So looking at Instagram, Snapchat and TikTok, when asked, who do you pay most attention to when you're on either of these social networks and when you want to consume news, they say that they are most interested in internet personalities. So who are internet personalities? Effectively, they are influencers as we know them. Ordinary people perhaps, but have built up a massive tribe based on a keenness for a particular topic or a particular product. So when it comes to Instagram, 
36% of the audience say that they follow internet personalities. That grows to 37% on Snapchat and increases to 40% on TikTok. You know, influencer marketing has been around, I think, forever. We used to have sports stars, movie stars, and pop stars align themselves with brands. But now in the digital age, it just means that we have previously unknown individuals who have built up massive followings, perhaps from their bedroom or their home office. So I do think that there's massive potential for government and public sector agencies to engage in influencer marketing, but you need to have a plan that is definitely considered and maybe a little bit conservative. Level up your social media skills by taking our diploma in social media, plus gain an industry qualification. Use the code SOCIALMEDIA20 for a 20% discount. Visit publicsectormarketingpros.com. So how should you approach influencer marketing if you are working in comms in a government or a public sector agency? Well, the first thing that you want to think about is who is the audience that you want to reach and what is the campaign that you're trying to promote? There should be alignment between the influencer, the message that you're communicating, and then ultimately the audience that you're trying to target. In an ideal world, you will target somebody where your citizens can actually see a lot of themselves in that influencer. One of the dangers with influencer marketing for a government and public sector agency is perhaps taking in and parachuting in a superstar that totally disengages an audience. So I think authenticity is key. Another tip that I would suggest is that going big isn't always necessarily better and actually leaning into your micro or to your nano influencers who have niche audiences can actually work better because remember we have that viral opportunity when it comes to social media so if you have a nano influencer that is just under 10,000 followers that audience might become advocates for your campaign and actually if I was starting out in influencer marketing I may test a campaign with a nano influencer. Some other things to consider is that you want your influencer to be a magnet for public trust. At the end of the day, the main conversion in this campaign is not going to be a swipe up to a makeup brand. It's actually going to be buy-in to a policy that you are increasing awareness of among your citizenship base. And so having that influencer being a magnet for public trust is really important. What you do not want to happen at the end of this campaign is that you have less trust from the public in the work that you are doing. So what are some ways that you can achieve that? Well, definitely the influencer needs to have influential appeal to you in the public sector in the first instance. And I recently delivered a webinar for Sinead Irish Blogger Agency to some influencers uh, from Ireland and the UK. And I highlighted the point that they may be influential to their own audiences, but there are some criteria where public sector will see, want to see if they are a right fit. And some of those criteria are having a direct line to a segmented audience. So again, they may not want you to uh, appeal to everyone on the island of Ireland, but they may want you to appeal to a particular audience. And so having that audience uh, available to you through the lens of the smartphone is key. That authentic appeal is really, really important. You know, is the influencer just doing it because it's another commercial gig for him or her? Or are they doing it because they really care about this policy? Are they pro-vaccine? Are they pro-booster? Have they been promoting it authentically on their channels from the beginning of the pandemic? That's an example. The quality of the content also has to be high. And this is a really important point. If government and public sector are investing public money effectively into this campaign, then the quality of the content needs to be at a high standard. They will require 
higher quality perhaps than some brands are demanding off you so doing your research and thinking about how you create and format that content will be important uh, a professional approach goes without saying and again perhaps you haven't worked with public sector before but they will definitely uh, be seeking um, all of your uh, commercial documents if you're tax compliant do you have insurance so all of this matters to a government agency Transparency and trustworthiness is really important because as soon as an influencer marketing campaign goes live, you have the eyeballs, the attention of the public, but also off of the onlooking media. And they may begin to ask some questions about this collaboration. Alignment with the target audience is really important, as is alignment with the campaign objectives. And you know, what I would like to see when, you know, bringing influencers and public sector together is having somebody who is a subject matter in their field. And they could be a subject matter by virtue of them being a mother or by virtue of them working in um, some profession. Perhaps they are an expert in sustainability or in cryptocurrency. But again, having expertise that you can talk to the campaign point is really important. And then having a real understanding of the topic in question. Is it a new piece of legislation? Is it a policy point? So I think there is some work in bridging the gap between the influencer and the public sector organisation. And of course, these are things that you as a public sector marketing pro should be thinking about and looking for in your campaign. So with over 15 billion euro being spent globally this year in influencer marketing, what percentage of your marketing and comms budget are you going to put to that tactic in 2022? We're now halfway through our social media bootcamp series, but you can still watch those masterclasses on demand. So far, we've gone through Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, and we have LinkedIn and TikTok to go. We have people tuning in from all across the world. They're also getting their mini social networking plans to take away with them. And what I'm going through are the tactics right now that will maximize organic reach for you. So if you want to be inspired uh, around social media, if you're just beginning on your social media journey, these masterclasses are a great opportunity. They're also really affordable. So go ahead and check out our website at publicsectormarketingpros.com. A one-stop shop digital marketing and social media resource. Join our membership academy for 12 months. Access a library of how-to videos, template strategies, and organizational policies. Monthly live coaching. Attend webinars with subject matter experts. Meet and network with public sector pros from across the world. Use the code MEMBERSHIP20 for a 20% discount. Visit publicsectormarketingpros.com. In today's show, I'm delighted to be joined by Sinead Carroll, the founder of Irish Blogger Agency. A career change from banking after 15 years led Sinead to setting up her own business in June 2015. She had massive involvement in the world of blogging through fashion and her lifestyle blog, Yummy Mummy, and then built up Irish Blogger Agency. It is Ireland's dedicated influencer marketing agency and home to over 600 bloggers, vloggers, content creators and social media influencers. Sinead loves connecting brands and influencers. And in today's show, we talk about the power of influencer marketing in 2022. Sinead, thank you so much for joining me on the Public Sector Marketing Show. Hi, Joanne. Thanks so much for having me. So listen, you are the queen of influencer marketing and probably ahead of your time when you set up Irish Blogger Agency. But how would you describe influencer marketing to your clients? Okay, so I suppose influencer marketing is a form of social media marketing, um, which involves like endorsing endorsements and product placements from influencers. And these people normally hold its way over potential buyers or, or followers um, in the digital space um, because of their maybe their expertise, their popularity, or their reputation. So we're looking at influencer marketing where we employ these um, niche content creators to improve things like brand awareness, maybe increase traffic, 
um, drive your brand's message to your target audience. And these content creators already speak to the ideal audience um, across their social media channels. And this allows you to probably expand your reach greater than you trying to do it from scratch yourself. And I love the way that you describe it as like a form of social media marketing, because I actually haven't heard that before. And you're absolutely right, because uh, primarily their social networks are their main platforms. And looking into 2022, is anything changing in the space? I know you have your finger on the pulse of influencer marketing in Ireland, but also globally. Um, how is it evolving this year? Like influencer marketing is becoming a massive trend in 2022 and beyond. Um, like the stats alone are just mind blowing. Um, and I'll, I'll share them some of them with you as well. But I suppose the key trends that I'm seeing in um, in Ireland in particular, and it's great for my business, is the growth in popularity of micro and nano influencers. Um, so these are the influencers maybe with 1,000 followers, right up to 100,000 followers. So these guys now are really shining and proving that working with these or collaborating with this form of influencer is getting a great return on your investment. Um, so that's one key thing. Um, and I'm delighted I have 700 micro influencers on my platform, which is fantastic. Um, then we're looking at more uh, going into 22 and beyond ongoing partnerships. Um, and I'm, quite, I'm trying to, I suppose, sing this hymn because I see the importance and the value of not just a one uh, hit campaign. If you have more ongoing campaigns, um, maybe, you know, use your uh, budget, some of your budget to plan out and map out a strategy for six months or three months, even as short as three months. But have ongoing campaigns um, is, is more effective than just a once off campaign when you're working in particular with micro and nano influencers. I suppose also. Um, there's been, you know, the different social media platforms and some now we're moving on to TikTok, which I've noticed a lot of, of the influencers on my books are um, and they're grown in that space. And then I suppose finally the one trend uh, uh, that's growing and I think it's it's a good idea and a good way to measure as well is more performance based deals so that you can, you know, get a return on your investment even greater from working with these influencers. So when you're... Uh, recruiting influencers for a campaign and I know that you uh, love the detail and also the data what are you looking for and I know you have high standards as well so what are you looking for before you do that match um so I suppose we have to look at it um in overall terms so reach is, is important and um, the amount of followers somebody has but looking at that standalone is no good we have to look at their engagement rate in particular. I'm a big fan of engagement rate versus reach. Um, so looking at that whole, like how many people are commenting, how many people are sharing, how many views each piece of content are, is getting. Um, you also have to look at, you know, matching up the correct platform, whether that be TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, that's vitally important when you're recruiting as well to get the right place where your audience is hanging out. Obviously, the reputation of the influencer is so important. And um, with 700 influencers on my book, I don't know them all individually, but it's important that, you know, you can go into their social media platforms and look at their tone of voice and their content and what their audience are currently saying. You'll have a good, you get a good vibe of that. And then finally, I suppose, price and budget is, is important to, um, to the campaign as well, because that dictates what kind of content you're going to create and um, how long the campaign is going to be for. So there would be the, the top things that I'd look for when recruiting for any campaign. So on budget, that leads us nicely into the ROI, the return on investment of influencer marketing. Let's talk about that tangible value that organizations are getting for their spend. Um, yeah, so this there's no blueprint for this and it, it can be quite difficult to put a value on, you know, working with um, an influencer and where do you even start? So the to date, the matrix as I've been working with is a calculation based on the number of followers with their reach combined with their impressions um, and it gives you some indication of, of a fee. Um, so I suppose 
we're looking at that combination um, to come up with the maths on that. So I suppose from campaigns working with the nano influencers right to, through to the, you know, maybe 50,000 followers on a micro influencers account, we've We've priced um, campaigns and, and content creation from as low as 20 euro per piece of content right up to, you know, a thousand euro. Um, so there is a big difference there. Um, but we're looking at then, I suppose, you know, the value in the user generated content also. There has to be a value put on that. Um, so that means you get to use the influencers content that they've created, maybe for your Facebook advertising, for your website. So there's lots of value there as well. So um, I suppose globally, influencer marketing is, is doubling in size um, globally. Um, between 2019 and 2021, it has doubled. So there is return on investment. It's just you need to put the parameters out there as well yourself as somebody who's creating the campaign and put a value on these matrices as well. But generally, that's what we've been working with here at Irish Blogger Agency. And so content formats is also changing. And you mentioned the the rush and the the uptick in TikTok in 2022. Um, so what yeah. type of content are influencers creating that is generating, you know, high performance results and return? Um, so what we're really seeing working on um, right now is the Instagram Reels. They're getting really great views and really great interaction and engagement. Um, so they're working really well. Um, also, we're finding that um, videos obviously are becoming more powerful and audio and voiceovers and all this kind of great content. So we're moving away from the text and the images to more audio and video. Um, and then we're looking at, you know, TikTok obviously is really um, popular now, and especially since lockdown, you know. So we're trying to get ways now to become more creative with that kind of content as well. And obviously you can move that over from TikTok and Instagram Reels as well. Um, so basically, I think um, we're still keeping an eye on, you know, the static images, but carousels are working really well because you're getting people to spend longer swiping over and it tells a story in a nice kind of image or, or a nice kind of a graphic. And also then there's the opportunity to save that post, which gives you more reach as well um, to come back to and read again at a later date. So when it comes to the campaign brief and putting it together for the client, along with the influencer and you're there in the middle, who's who's creating the content? Is that the responsibility of the influencer? Is it maybe the, the brand or the organization? You, is it a, or is it a mix or does it just depend? Yeah, so it's a mix. Um, they, what I would always recommend is that the brand know their their goals and what they want to achieve from a campaign. Maybe they can create a, an outline of a brief, give the influencer some creative freedom if they wish. Um, and then you can also dictate, uh, um, you know, more advertorial style content where you can maybe bring them into your premises and, and set up like the full crew would get it all recorded and you're just using their platform um, and their reputation to deliver the message. Um, so there's, there's a number of ways. How I work in the middle is I coordinate it all for you because so I can um, liaise between you and the influencer and bring the whole thing seamlessly together and make sure that, you know, all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed and both uh, parties know what there is expected of them. And by the end of the campaign, there's nobody, you know, feeling hard done by that everybody knows where they stand. So it's a mix of everything. And I'm happy to be in the middle to help out. And so can you share one campaign that kind of stands out that is a nice example where influencer marketing was the perfect uh, tactic to deploy for a, an organization or a brand? Yeah, so thankfully I have you um, since we went into lockdown. Thankfully for me, influencer marketing is is definitely a buzzword, and, and I'm in contact day in day out. Um, but one there that happened at Christmas, and I suppose um, it's it's relatable as well, is Aldi Community Games. Um, they launched a video of a Christmas song, and they were wanted it to be promoted to to the masses in Ireland. So we engaged um, a number of influencers to talk about the video, to direct traffic to YouTube, to send traffic to Facebook, to promote the content on Instagram. So we got like 
um, probably 10 influencers to talk about it over the Christmas period. Um, and we've seen great traction on that. We've seen lots of engagement, you know, lots of good field stories. And we engaged the influencers that matched up with that tar target audience as well. So it was um, a really successful campaign. Do you think influencer marketing is a space that public sector can jump into? Yes, and obviously me and you have spoke about this uh, on numerous occasions and I'm delighted to be back on, on your show again uh, to talk about it because I definitely do think there's space for the public sector. Uh, like an influencer is somebody really who has carved out a reputation through creating social content and who can shape people's behavior. So we know that if you get the right person um, to deliver the message on your behalf, it's very successful. However, you know, you as, as a, a public sector or government agency need to be careful in this consideration. So you need to make sure that you've done your risk checks and ensure there's no conflict of interest and, you know, make sure there's terms and conditions there um, but as long as you know what you're looking for, maybe map out your campaign, map out your storyboard. Um, what I do then is I allow the influencer to make suggestions. So you get a feel for, OK, are they on the same page as you? Are they talking your language? Are they speaking in your same voice? Um, are they going to be a good representative for delivering the message you're trying to get out there? So, um, yes, it's a very exciting space and I think it should be tapped into, especially the younger generation, they're, they have so much, um, you know, knowledge and expertise and experience online that, you know, there could be op massive opportunities there that we're missing. Um, and that's what I'm hoping to tap into for 2022. Brilliant. I'm just reminded also you delivered a wonderful workshop at our summit towards the end of last year on that. So that is yeah. still available uh, for those who, who were at the summit as a replay. And if, if people want to see it, reach out to me. Um, but let's talk about your platforms. One of the, the uniqueness of your business, Sinead, and your offering is that you have access to an amazing platform that has the data. So not only can you do, you know, post-campaign analytics, but you can actually do pre-campaign predictive analytics and also have a look at the, the profile and the reach of the influencers. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, it's very exciting for me to be able to offer this because this is my unique selling point. I'm the only Irish member with access to this um, technology that I know of right now through Mix Alliance, who are my partnership. Um, so it's it's a really exciting space to be in where I can um, have these influencers uh, made available to me through various filters on my platform. So once I can filter them through, you know, demographics, audience, gender, um, etc., loads of various categories, I can then go in and figure out, you know, what platforms they're on, their APIs are connected, so it's all real life data. And we can see their engagement rate and their followers, and we can make a, a really clear decision on why we should work with this person from a stats point of view. And it allows us to take us in to explore their content they're creating. Um, so then when we go to hire the influencers, I can make um, a campaign uh, brief uh, where we can um, potentially hire these influencers. If you're hiring one or more influencers, it accumulates all the data and it will throw out the projections on your views, your comments, your likes, your shares. So that over um, overview of that kind of data. Um, so it's literally at a click, click of the fingers and it saves so much time and ultimately then money for an organization if they um, have me doing that um, piece of the, the puzzle for them when it comes to matching up with influencers. And what's great about that is the whole transparency. You know, sometimes, uh, often I would say, often influencer marketing gets a bad name and a bad rep and often it's equally unfair. But with your platform um, and those insights in real time, everything is so transparent and i think from a public sector point of view when they're investing public money that's really important um okay your final question what are your top three tips when planning an influencer marketing campaign god i have so many top tips but let me see if i can narrow it down um i suppose i'm always saying this when when somebody rings me up and we start the conversation about influencer marketing you have to determine your goals. If you don't know what your goals are, it's very difficult for an uh, Irish blogger agency, the influencer to create content around that. So 
define your goals because different pieces of content work differently for different campaigns. So for example, if you're looking to grow your followers, um, maybe a competition or um, something like that would work. Maybe then if you're trying to attract people onto your website, um, a dedicated landing page with content feeding into that would work. So make sure you determine your goals and you know set your expectations. So that's my number one. Um, number two, um, I suppose, know who you're trying to influence. Um, so you as, as the person wanting to work with an influencer, you know, have your personas done, have your avatars done, make sure you know who you're asking the influencer to um, to influence because then that will give the influencer, you know, the opportunity to say, okay, my um, core audience is made up of a female between the ages of 20 and 30, um, and that is the perfect match then for your avatar. Um, I suppose from the brand point of view, another thing is point number three is, and very important for both the influencer and the brand, is know the rules around influencer marketing. Don't forget your hashtag ad, your sponsored post. You know, you need to disclose this information so that it's um, in line with the ASAI guidelines. And, you know, not to have it too small on, if, on your piece of content and not to forget to put it on your long form content. It needs to be there. So I think them three are the top three that I would say, to, you know, as to, to tick the boxes to get the foundations laid out. And then there's obviously loads more than when you get into the nitty gritties of choosing and picking and creating content. So as you can tell, Sinead has a wealth of information when it comes to influencer marketing really early to this industry in Ireland um, and then leaning into the technology. So if you're interested in finding out more about influencer marketing campaigns, how to spend your budget, how much to spend, um, Sinead is definitely an amazing mind. And I also love the fact that you're, you know, your whole background in business and banking, you know, that lends itself as well to to that ROI because you love to chart every single euro and make sure that your clients get a great return on investment. So where do you want to direct people next? What's the next step, Sinead, if they want to go and find out more or reach out to you? Yeah, probably you can take a look at my website. It's irishbloggeragency.com. That's a great place to start. So if you want to go on the brand page, you can see there what we can offer and there's a campaign brief that you can fill out. And um, if you're a little bit, you know, torn and you don't know still what it's all about or how I can help, I'm literally only an email away. Just send me an email sinead.irishbloggeragency.com I'll send you the link to my calendar I open my calendar every week you can book in a 15 minute um, let's talk about influencer marketing call and I'm more than happy um, I'm very straight up and I'll tell you straight away whether I think I can match you with an influencer or not do you know if I can't I'll say hands up I can't if I can I'll get all excited and do a happy dance with you but um, like over the years like I've been at this as Joanne said in this space since 2013 14 i had my own blog i've grown up with blogs and people blogging on social media i've made best friends out of this for god's sake and you know collaborations have been created so that alone just shows the power of social media and influencer marketing and taking it to the next step step or the next level is you know engaging these people who already and they are people they're normal people they're like you and I who just have you know said something someday that struck a chord with somebody and now they've got following that are highly engaged people who could potentially be your ideal audience so please just reach out um for amazing people I work with high vibe people I like good people so I will do my best to bring you the best. Amazing. And listen, you're one of my high vibe people too. Um, <laughs> we also met through the whole blogging scene. And again, yeah. you're straight up um, savvy. And um, yeah, I definitely align with you in terms of how I approach my clients. So I think people in, in government and public sector, no matter where you're listening throughout the world, you know, reach out to Sinead, have a chat and just investigate it because influencer marketing ain't going anywhere um Sinead Carroll thank you so much as always for joining me and being part of uh, our community and I will talk to you soon level up your digital skills by taking our diploma in digital marketing plus gain an industry qualification use the code digital marketing 20 for a 20% discount visit publicsectormarketingpros.com 
So before I wrap up episode 50, let me just flag our next free webinar, how to create a content marketing strategy in 30 minutes. Yes, spend an hour with me and we will have crafted a 12 month content plan for your agency department or your organization. Content planning is critical to digital communications and often starting off with content planning can stand you in good stead. Thank you so much for sticking with me for 50 episodes. In fact, have you listened or watched to all 50 episodes? If you have, I would love to hear from you. And if you do get in touch, I will send you something in the post. Let me know what your favorite episode has been from the 50 and why you enjoyed it. You tell me and I will share it with others. And of course, I always appreciate when you share the show with a public sector pro that you know. So from me for now, thank you so much for tuning in and I'll see you on episode 51. Thank you for tuning into this episode of the Public Sector Marketing Show. This episode has ended, but your digital journey can continue. Head over to publicsectormarketingpros.com to access resources and links mentioned in today's show and to connect with Joanne and her team. Until the next time, be sure to subscribe, rate and review on your favorite podcast platform. 